thank you so much to the American lawyer for this honor. And I want to congratulate my fellow honorees, Jay, Peter, Barry, Leah, Larry, Seth, and Ben on their richly deserved recognition tonight. I never dreamed I would stand here receiving this honor as a lawyer when I was a little girl. That's because when I was a little girl, I didn't know women could be lawyers. Uh, on the career questionnaire in the third grade, I checked the boxes for nurse and astronaut. <laughs> so I was excited when I learned that women could be lawyers while watching the Watergate impeachment hearings, to be exact. And I guess I got carried away because I ended up having not one but two legal careers. I wouldn't have had either of those without the mentors and heroes who believed in me and taught me so much about eloquence and principle and judgment. My parents, Joan and Bob, gave me their love of learning and their great work ethic. The great judge, Jim Oakes, gave me that most enviable of first law jobs, the Vermont Second Circuit Clerkship. <laughs> My Harvard professor, Larry Tribe, invited me to practice constitutional law with him. My Stanford colleague, Jerry Gunther, invited me to co-author the con law casebook I had studied from as a student. And against all odds, John Quinn and Bill Urquhart, visionaries and geniuses who've built the largest litigation firm in the world, invited me to go from being dean of Stanford Law School to joining Quinn Emanuel. I think the over-under among my new colleagues on how long I would last was about two weeks. <laughs> well, it has lasted 17 years now, and they have been the most exhilarating and joyous of my career. John and Bill built a global litigation firm, and with their genius enticed one brilliant partner after another to join it, and I am so grateful to count the greatest lawyers on the planet except for everyone else in this room, <laughs> as my law partners. And so thankful to my partners, my exuberant partners at tables 32 and 33 tonight. In addition to, in addition to John Quinn, who I'm so honored is here tonight, and Peter Calamari, another legal genius who helped build our New York office and enticed me there. I'm so happy to have my partners, Mike, Andy, Sushil, Jen, Kevin, Chris, Brian, Derek, William, and Elodie here tonight. And I want to say what defines them as so extraordinary as my colleagues. Passion and excellence, to be sure. Energy and zeal, to be sure. The kind of intellectual athleticism that makes litigation a team sport. But also two things we might rarely associate with big law. Joy and love. Joy and love is how we animate ourselves to win cases together. And joy and love is something that we got from someone who isn't here tonight, but to whom we very much owe all of our success. And that's our beloved Bill Urquhart, who we lost two years ago and miss profoundly every day. I would not be standing here were it not for Bill, who I met 40 years ago in a pro bono civil rights trial in the Big South when I was a summer associate at Cravath. And many of us at our firm wouldn't be here without Bill. I am so honored that Mary Urquhart and Elizabeth Urquhart are here tonight channeling Bill's spirit, and he's with us in spirit. None of us can do what we do without support from our families. I want to, above all, give immeasurable thanks to my beloved partner, Helen Stacy, beautiful, brilliant, infinitely wise, and indispensable to any success I've had in the last 22 years. And I want to close by just saying a few things about the law. We know the law is a business. The American lawyer helps us celebrate what a great business it is to be. It's also a profession, and I dare say a calling, one in which the power of words and advocacy enable us to change fortunes and lives. It is a place where precedent matters, and we are people who stand in the stream of the cases that came before us and will go after us, and we stand in the stream of the mentors who taught us and the protégés who will take our work into the future. So, the transmission across generations of knowledge that's represented in this room is one of the most important things we do. I want to comment last on how the law is a portal to immense change. Women lawyers now have opportunities I never dreamed of when I graduated from law school in 1981, which happened to be the year that the first woman was appointed to the US Supreme Court and the first woman was made a litigation partner in big law. I, and when I worked on gay rights cases in the 1980s, before the term gay rights even existed, I never would have believed that today we would have the liberties afforded by cases like Lawrence Obergefell and Bostock. 
There is so much more to be done as the legal universe continues to bend toward equality and inclusion, but it has been an extraordinary privilege to be part of the dramatic change that has happened in my lifetime, and I am humbled and honored by this recognition. Thank you.